got okay. All right, we got this, we got that. Awesome. And uh, like I said, we can edit anything later. You can edit anything later you need to, okay? Okay. Because we're not live, we're just in the studio. That's right. So, yeah. All right. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Dr. Lisa, uh, Lisa the Preacher's uh, Ministries here. We are, we're going to be doing a study starting today uh, on Hosea in the Old Testament of the Bible as we start our journey on talking about relationships, marriage, divorce, uh, you know, lifestyles, uh, love styles. Um, you know, we're, we're going to really get deep uh, as we prepare to present a written work at some point here uh, on this topic of relationships. So we're going to start out, like I said, in the book of Hosea. And, uh, you know, I introduce to some and I present to others Dr. Lisa, the preacher. Dr. Praise Lisa, the hello. Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher and Apostle Bishop Courtney Williams. I didn't even introduce myself. Wow. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Take a moment to do that. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm Apostle Bishop Courtney Williams. I'm a uh, presiding prelate of Church uh, for All People Incorporated and um, just grateful to um, be a part of what God is doing in the kingdom of God. Uh, as we look to be a place that welcomes everyone uh, everywhere to worship, to serve, and to be sent out to fulfill their God-given destiny. Um, and I'm grateful that Pastor uh, Dr. Lisa is joining us uh, from Michigan as part of uh, the movement that is Church for All People. Uh, we thank God for what, what God is calling us to in this hour. So, yeah, we're not a denomination. We're a, we're a movement. We're, we're preparing to go out, and we're working with churches of all different denominations, uh, non-denominational churches as well, uh, Pentecostals and non-Pentecostals, um, uh, Democrats and Republicans. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're working with all people, and, and that's been a challenge for, for us to accept that mission um, because all for us means all. And um, so that means the voices can all be different. The people can all be different. Not everybody agrees on everything. Uh, but uh, we are here for the soul harvest, to see people in, uh, come into the kingdom of God and be affirmed in their faith and in their calling. So no matter who they are. So that's, that's who we are, and that's the, that's the stick, amen, as they say. And we're going to be challenging you, uh, Dr. Lisa, I mean, I've seen people liking some of the videos that we've shared uh, in our last encounter, and people are being challenged uh, to have a better understanding of what uh, healthy relationships look like, right? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and what what does it mean? I mean, what does marriage mean? And what does what does being even what does being single mean? What does being a man or a woman really mean? I mean, you know, uh, uh, if we're going to talk about uh, gender roles, and I mean. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, and, we're, and, we're and we're gonna talk today. about it fairly raw, you know. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, even though I've been married before, I'm divorced now, but I've been married twice, and um, you know, and I have a lot of relationship experience. I was married for 32 years, and even before that, you know, I, I dated as a teenager. So, you know, when it comes to relationships, you know, I have some idea, you know, and people may say, well, you're divorced, so what you have to say don't count because, you know, it didn't last. Well, whether my marriage has lasted or not, I still put in 32 years. Hello. That has to count for something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. I mean, yeah. I think it does. I'm on my, I'm on my second one. And yeah. um, my first one was, I was married over 20 years. Uh, to my first wife, and um, and uh, still maintain a, a, a healthy relationship uh, with her, uh, support her and everything that she does uh, in life. And um, I remember I showed up to a friend of mine's church, you know, and she was in tow, and they I think they were a little confused, like why is she here? 
you know? Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, I, this, we, I told him, we don't leave our people behind, right? So, uh, you know, and um, so we're going to talk about more about that and what, what that what that really means. And, um, you know, but I think that we all relate to other people. We all conduct ourselves and carry ourselves, you know, carry ourselves through the world or through the time, the brief scope of time that we're on this earth maintaining relationships what no matter what that relationship is that could be the relationship with your parents your brother or sister like i said or as we're going to be talking about someone that you're connected to in marriage or divorce or whatever the case may be you know um that's we're all in relationships and, and you need to know how to have i used to say this in all my counseling sessions I, my goal is not to keep you married but to teach you how to have a healthy relationship yes yes Okay. Right. Okay. So, you know, I mean, if if you have healthy relationships, you're not gonna be throwing people away. So you not you might not and maybe and maybe you see yourself moving on, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that person is, is garbage or trash or something that, that's supposed to be left on the curbside. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. I, and okay, I, I was in a quick conversation earlier, I wanted to share this. Like I said, you know, I operate my life on three simple rules. Uh and this is from um, uh, uh, Lord have mercy, Bishop Bishop Jobs, um, out of the Methodist movement. And he, he says, "Do good, do no harm, and stay in love with Jesus." And in relationships, I focus a great deal on doing no harm, because I understand the, the the power and the privilege, especially as a male, that I have in this world. Yes. You know, to to make and to break covenants, you know, and. Um, that's important. It's important that I that I don't cause harm, or as uh, J. Bass said, I don't cause pain. Yeah. You hear me? So, so we need to learn how to have a relation, healthy relationships, so we do not cause pain, so we do not cause harm, uh, and that in the midst of that, that we continue to stay in love with Jesus. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying that we have to stay in love with people all the time, <laughs> but at least continually stay in love with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and do good and do good to people. It yes. You know. I mean, you know, this, 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 this doesn't cost us anything to do good. Amen you know, to really. that. Might not cost us anything, you know. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. praise the Lord. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> All right, so you ready? All right, so, um, so Bishop, if you'd like, go ahead and um, lead us into prayer, and we'll jump right into Hosea. We won't All delay. Right, folks. The book of Hosea. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time, this season, this place, for bringing us together. Lord, you said where any two are touching and agreeing on anything that you would do it. And Lord, we ask that you help us get this message out, that you would do it. Help us get this message out. Help us to heal broken relationships and broken minds and broken people, oh God, so that they can go out there and be your, be a light unto the world to do good to people, oh God to do them no harm, O oh God, and to stay in great relationship with you, O oh Lord. And Lord, we pray uh, that your, the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart yes, be truly yes. acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, yes. our strength and our redeemer. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Bless. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, so um, I'll, I'll be the reader, I guess. <laughs> well, you can start off. I'll, I'll read if you read some. I'll read some. We're gonna make okay, it through this. Okay, we can there. mix it up. We make it the first chapter together. Okay. Hosea one. All right then. Um, I think my phone is ringing. Hopefully, it's not um, interfering. I'll let it stop ringing first. <laughs> I should have hit the no, I I can hear you very clearly. Okay. I think, okay. All right. So Hosea chapter one, verse one. The word of the Lord came, that came unto Hosea, that say ye unto your brethren, am I? Am I reading the right spot? Hold on. That's right. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to start back at the top. Hold on. Yeah. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, 
that say ye unto your brethren, Am I? And to your sisters, Then said the Lord unto me. I think we skipped over to chapter 2. Okay, hold up. Yeah, uh, hold on. Yeah, I think I uh, did something that, yeah. <laughs> hold on. I'm online and not using the because book. I'm so, I'm so excited about chapter one, I'm ready to dive right in. I'm... Yeah, hold up. Yeah, I did something wrong. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. I knew I was reading wrong. Okay, okay. <laughs> here we go, guys. <laughs> Take two, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Bari, okay, Bari, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam, 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 yeah. the son of Joash, king of Israel, kings of Judah compared to kings of Israel. There's a lot of meat in there, in that part right there. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. I wish I had my other phone right here. I'd be on my phone right now, getting, getting a couple things together. Okay, yeah. so let's let's, um, let's let's go back up a little bit. Okay, the word uh -huh. of the Lord that came unto Hosea. Uh -huh. Now it don't say at this point in time how the word came to Hosea. Uh -huh. It just says the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea. So we don't know how it was delivered just yet at this point. Now, who is Hosea? It's breaking it down as to who this man is. Okay? The son of Bari. Is that how you say it, Bari? Yeah. Because Bari has two R's. Bari has the two E's. I'm just assuming. And if I'm saying it wrong, guys, forgive us, okay? <laughs> okay. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahias, and Hezekiah. Now, all of these guys, one, two, three, four, are kings of Judah. Kings of, kings of that, that's so important. Judah, though, Judah is one of the twelve tribes of Israel. I believe the fourth son. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. So this is very specific. Yeah. Very yeah. specific. We have there's a tradition, there's a biblical tradition to put everything within a within a context, you know, historically, so that we understand where the kingdom uh where things are between even between God and the kingdom of um of Israel and Judah. Because then we know, like, you know, what kings are reigning, what, you know, what, what things are really going on. To sort of understand even the nature of the relationship, and, we'll, and I don't want to get ahead of us in the reading, but even the, the nature of God's relationship with mankind, you know, and with his chosen people, especially his chosen people, as we read through the Old Testament, right? Mm hmm Now, it's, it's interesting that Uzziah is mentioned, uh, because we we all know this uh, popular, I'm sure many of us know this popular uh, scripture, in the year that King Uzziah died, then I saw the Lord high and lifted up, right? And there's this whole symphony of words used to describe the throne room of God. And, and, and literally, we see Hosea saying that he exists in the same time frame 
uh, right before the uh, Hosea is is literally prop, uh, being a prophet of minor, what we call a minor prophet, in the time where his eye is alive. And then we get another prophet who actually talks about his experience, uh, his hearing of the voice of the Lord after the death of uh, Isaiah. So, so you sort of get to see where Hosea sort of fits in. So he he comes in before, then another prophet comes in behind him, and that's sort of how God sort of dealt with the prophets. You know, one would come in and prophesy and be 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 the lead prophet, and then another would come after that, right? And uh, basically, really share where God is in dealing with his people. So he sets this context. Not only do we see him um, in, in this reign of Isaiah, but we also see him in the time where the tribes are um, still separated. So so there's there's the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom um, and, uh, and, and the kingdom of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we know that even God's people at this time are, are experiencing some division, right? Some division. Uh, and and for, for Bible theologians, you know that that meant that they worshiped at two different places. One worshiped at, at Jerusalem and another worshiped in a, um, at a temple in another city, right? Right. So, so this is, so, so the people are divided. Uh, Isaiah, is, is still alive uh, and Hosea hears a word from the Lord and what is that word and, and that's where we go from there okay so that's where you'll pick up at verse 2 verse 2 so the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea so this is the word of the Lord that's given to Hosea and so the, the we, we, um, we know that scripture is words that were inspired by God and delivered by men. And this is what happened here in the book of Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we want to we make God as 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 vanilla flavored as we possibly can, and God is not like that. God is raw, <laughs> he real, and he's straight to the point, right? And I mean, you know, this is straight, no chaser, talking to the prophet of God, and he says, "Go down there and marry a whore, and have children." with the whore. It has some whole kids. Prostitutes. Yeah. Right. Prostitutes. Children about here. Mm. So, I don't know. Somebody going to be mad at me. Listen, if you're going to be mad, fast forward about two minutes, you, you'll you be okay. okay? <laughs> Traditionally, you know, you have your wife, what have you, but if you read back through the Old Testament, and then and it ain't it ain't just normal not it ain't just normal people. The people are the people in the cheap seats. Seats. It's tribal leaders. Traditionally, they had their relationship with their spouse, and then you know it's better. Better there's a, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says better to um, waste your seed in the belly of a whore than upon the ground. And there's a little. It, it's ironic that we we see. Um, well, we see Jeroboam here, but, uh, but, uh, 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 you know, further back in the Old Testament, uh, in, the, in David's day, wasting seed on the ground. So, so it's like, so basically they had a tradition, well, if you couldn't get to your spouse or whatever, blah, 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 you can go put your seed inside of a, of a, of a prostitute. Wow. Because, yeah, I mean, at the end of the that. day, at the end of the day, a woman is a woman. Woman is a woman. Now, a woman is a woman. Now, if, that, if that child comes forth, it won't be a seed of promise. In other words, that child inherits nothing, right? But that was just a that was just a standard practice back then, right? So, so Hosea is being told from the Lord, you need to go get you a prostitute and have some kids by. Now, this is different 
he, I mean, he's talking about go find a prostitute, go marry her, and have some babies. Okay, now, now, I want to link this right here at this moment. We're going to mm -hmm. jump over to Genesis. Because mm -hmm. I don't think this is, I don't think this is the first time this has happened. I don't believe so either. Um, and I have a couple of scripture texts that can probably support that. Uh, as well, like you said, like I said, we go into Genesis. We, we about to see this thing for what it really is. And um, he specifically uses this word, make her your wife. So go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go to Genesis. Okay. Genesis chapter 2. All right. So put your finger right there, Hosea 1. <laughs> we're going to go all the way back. We're going to go back, way, like they say, way back. back in way time. back. We're going to go to Genesis 2, and we're going to see here. The truth going to come out tonight. That's all I can say about it. All right. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we kind of hit on it the other night while we were texting. We did. I know. We were texting back and forth about this. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Genesis chapter 2. Okay. I should go grab my Bible instead of playing around with this uh, computer stuff, you know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 2. And let's go down to verse 4. Okay. And I'm a romantic reader. So I like to romanticize even biblical stories. Just a little bit. That's just how I am. So, okay. So here we go. <laughs> These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. So God already created. To me, creation is like a, a mental thing. You know? And then once things are created in the mind, then they can be made in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. So God already created everything. And he also began to make stuff. So at this point, he's created and he's made stuff. Now he's down to the final stage of his making process. Mm -hmm. The making. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so let me continue. And the, oh, 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 and I wanted to mention that people don't understand that we don't only have generations on this earth. We have generations in heaven too. Mm -hmm. That's what it says right here. Generations of the heavens. What does that mean? Generations of the heavens? We won't, you know, elaborate on it tonight. But it just makes you go, what? But here we go. Generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So he creates and he makes. Verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. See how he creates things? Even before they're uh -huh. there. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. It hasn't rained yet. Now we don't know how long the earth has been around. He just created and made everything right. But it hasn't uh -huh. rained yet. So we're not sure how much time has gone by, but however much time has gone by, it has not rained. I'm not sure why that's important, but it's stated it. So here we go. And there was not a man to till the ground. Now at this point, man was not even made yet. He was created, thought about in the mind of the Lord, but he had not been physically made yet. But God already knew he was going to come here and work. 
till the ground? Till the ground? You gonna have to bring this home for me because I'm trying to see where we at. We getting there. <laughs> yeah. you know. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, now, cause we gotta get we gotta get to Jose. Come on, let's see what where we at. Where God we had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Man wasn't made mm -hmm. yet, but God knew that when He did make him, He made him to do what. Bishop, mm -hmm. to do what? Based on that, till the ground. To till the ground. Work. Okay, there we go. Yes, he made him. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. verse six. But there went up a mist from the earth. Now see, God made a request. He made a request. He says, "I don't have a man." So what happens? What happens when he say he don't have a man? There went up a mist from the earth. So at this point, just like, just like Hosea, Most High himself called himself a woman. Called himself a prostitute right here at this moment. And what was this prostitute to do? This woman, this earth to do? Produce. Him what? Mm -hmm. A man, a child, a seed. Made of what? Her water and her dirt. All right, all right. So this is the first marriage, the first time God asked a woman to produce for him. To produce. Okay. Listen. So, so we have the creation story is a beautiful thing in that it's a, it's a multiplicity of story because we don't, it's not actually chronological and it, 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 it repeats itself because it's re, it's a retelling over and over and over again of this, of this beautiful symphony of how things happened, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Um, and, um, so we see, we, we see the, um, um, the, 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 well, the creation or the coming together in order to set the world in order, and not just set the world in order, to set all of creation into order. Um, so I can, I can see where you're coming from. Okay, so then it coming. says, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So the earth was so excited to be able to do this for the Lord, to give the mm -hmm. Lord most high a man, a child. The whole mm -hmm. surface was wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It hadn't rained. Mm -hmm. But somehow moisture happened. But we already know that there was water on the earth because, you know, it was all separated out and all this, that, and the other. But at the end of the mm -hmm. day, the earth eagerly provided a man for the Lord upon his request. Mm -hmm. And then okay. it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust. So whatever the earth rendered up, mist and some dirt, dust, God used it. He used that dust mm -hmm. of the ground and breathed his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to Hosea. <laughs> I can't go back to Hosea yet. You can't go. Oh! <laughs> the, the reason why I can't is because we're talking about the uh, uh, we're talking about the marrying of of, of, of a prostitute. Prostitute. A, a dirty a dirty old bra. Okay. Well, I guess the, well the herb is a dirty old bra. Then okay. <laughs> I mean, look how we treat our earth. Look at how we treat the earth. We trash it up. That's poignant. I think that's poignant. Because, yeah, that it's, and the, whole, the whole essence of the story of Hosea is to put ourselves in, in the place of, primarily in the place of the prostitute. Because he calls us, the children, he calls the children of Israel, Judah, 
and all of them, you know, a whore, right? And he does it over and over again. That's not the only time. We don't only see it in Hosea. You know, uh, it says that he's married to the prostitute. He's saying, I, God's saying, I'm literally married. If, if you can't understand that concept, then you miss Hosea. People miss Hosea altogether. Right? So, so sometimes we have to go to the beginning and see what God married. He married dirt. He married the earth. I, you, you know what? You know, God love you because, I mean, that when you said it to me the other day, I was like, that was a deep thought. And I still think it's a deep thought. I'm like, I'm still working I mean, on he it. blew I'm his breath on. of life into this dirt. It says it right there. Mm -hmm. The nostrils mm -hmm. of the Lord did this. Mm -hmm. This clunk of earthly dirt, this world, he, it says that he loved this world, that he gave his only begotten son for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is true. Yeah. This is true. All right, so let's Genesis 38. Genesis 38. Um, and um, so, all right, verses, uh, verse 14, well, verse 13. And this is a scripture about Tamar and Judah. We already talked about the tribe of Judah. This is, this is where the name Judah comes from. God gave it. Daddy. We're going to call him Daddy Judah, the father. The father of yep, the tribe. Yep. This is the father of the tribe. Yep, 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 yep. He actually, yeah. And it, so there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, but here, here it is. It says, and it was told, verse 38, um, verse 13, chapter 38 of Genesis. It says, and it was told Tamar, saying, behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timoth to shear sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered herself with a veil and wrapped herself and set in an open place, which is by the way of Timonoth, where she saw that Sheila was uh, grown, uh, and she was not given unto him to wife. So she was supposed, Tamar was supposed to marry the daughter of uh, the son of Judah, right? Yes. And she doesn't get this opportunity because Judah doesn't want to give up this son. And we, we, we can sort of understand where Judah's coming from. This is... Uh, uh, Joseph's father, you know, um, there's some other things that, that end up happening. So he's, he's already lost one son. He doesn't want to lose another one. And, um, every husband Tamar has ever married has died. I'm not talking about Tamar Braxton. So y'all can just get up off that right now. You know, no, she's messy. I get it. Well, I get where you coming from. But this is, this is the Tamar in the Bible. which I'm sure she was named after. Which, which is, is two of them. There's right? more than one in the Bible too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the one I know the most story about. Yes. So, so, uh, so it says that, um, so when Judah saw her, 